Um, about 80 million gallons. 80 million gallons of wine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's Sauvignon Blanc. So this was a question that got asked, why we pick the grapes at night? This thing is huge. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we could start that and do that in the garage or in the barn. I don't like red wine. Oh. <laughs> so let's stick with Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California and this channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. And today we are going on a field trip. Okay, I am here with my cousin my awesome cousin, she is a winemaker and she's gonna be giving us a tour of the winery she works at, which is like a pretty large winery. And uh, they've got, how many tanks do you guys have? Um, about 600 tanks. 600 tanks, and how much wine does it hold? Um, about 80 million gallons. 80 million gallons of wine. Yeah. And, and like, how much wine is in a typical bottle like how many 750 mils how many bottles of wine does that make do you know that one uh <laughs> quick math of, okay so 80 million it would make about uh 40 million cases 40 so, million cases and there's 12 bottles in a case yes 12 so you guys can do that math yeah. for yourself yeah that's rough math but it'll rough be math close, yeah. yeah okay so how long have you been a winemaker um, since I graduated college, so, um, 2000, oh, well, I've been in the wine industry. Not to give away your age. I know. So you I've look been like you're in 25. the wine industry since 2000. <laughs> 2000. Um, I've been a winemaker for about 15 years. I don't know. I, I just kind of progressed and I, um, moved down to Monterey County and I learned more and I started managing the lab and then I came up to Lodi and an assistant winemaker and these are all the the what they've got in tanks right now they taste test them yeah. you know do you want to see the grapes first yeah okay let's do that okay so 800 okay. tanks that's uh, uh, 600 or 600 so. tanks and 80 80,000 gallons of wine 80 million 80 million <laughs> oh my god yeah Oh my God, that wine. Why do you dump so much wine on the floor? Is that just cleaning? Yeah. That's why I didn't want to get into wine making. So these are actually, these two small tanks are tanks that we use for culturing yeast. What does that mean? Oh, so yeah, we'll put a small what... amount of, we'll put a small amount of juice in these. Okay. And yeast them at a higher rate than we would normally. And um, build up the culture so it's nice and healthy and it's fermenting, just starting to ferment, and then we'll pitch it into a couple of bigger tanks. So why do you have to put yeast in wine? Is there a simple to answer? ferment? Well, you don't have to because there is yeast on the grapes already. There's native yeast. Okay. But um, there's a couple of things. Sometimes it will, those yeasts will give you off flavors. Sometimes they're not as strong, so like they won't be able to ferment to your um, the alcohol that you want. So okay. They'll stick, so you'll have sugar left over in the in the wine. Not all wineries, but all, most wineries use yeast that they purchase. Okay. Um, like you've learned that certain yeasts have certain flavors and that promote. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I would have never known. Yeah. We have three sites where we can crush grapes, dump trucks, and crush grapes. Okay. This is the newest out of the three areas, and this is where the Sauvignon Blanc is coming today. So that's why I'm bringing you over here. Okay, yeah. so that's Sauvignon Blanc yep. getting ready to be dumped. That's going to be me in a couple weeks. Well, in a week, hopefully. Why, why we pick at night? Okay, yes. Yeah. So this was a question that got asked, why we pick the grapes at night? So we pick the grapes at night I feel like you're for... really quiet. Oh, for <laughs> honestly, for the reason of the temperature, right? We want, it, want the grapes to come into the winery as cool as possible. And so, you know, especially in California, it's hot. They're going to sit and they're going to travel. Sometimes they have to travel far distances to get to the winery. Sometimes they have to wait a long time in line to get dumped. Oh, so, yeah. So um, you want to keep that temperature cool, number one, so it doesn't start fermenting on its own. Okay. So it doesn't extract. Any, anything from the skins if you don't want anything extracted from the skins 
So <clears throat> it just helps us control the process a little bit better. Oh, I was wondering how it was tipping. I was wondering if it had hydraulics, but there's actually a thing up there yeah. that picks it up. Because yeah. I thought, oh, maybe it has hydraulics that does it. Oh, you know? Yeah. yeah. on the top okay okay so those round uh-huh okay so what there is there's a bag inside of those and it will blow up and so as it blows up with air it will push it'll squeeze the very handful of presses and that'll pull out all the juice a um a bag of air will it's like a big up in bag. those yeah Oh wow, I would have never known that that's how it was done. Yeah. So you can select um, the pressure, you can select the time, how long you're going to let it drain. Oh, well, and then it'll rotate. So it'll blow up and it'll rotate, blow up, rotate. It's I honestly had no idea. I just figured they all got like smushed or something. Take the white wines, but the white wines will go directly to the press. Okay. We'll squeeze the juice out and send the juice to a tank. For red wines, the grapes will go directly to the tank. We're going to ferment the red wines on the skin. Oh. But the white wines, we don't want the skin. So this gets all the skin off? Yep. Yeah, and so the, just the juice comes out. And this is called the press? Yeah. So mm -hmm. the red wines don't even go through the press system at the beginning? Yes. They okay. just go straight to the tank? Yes. With the skin? Yep. Got it. You're a fast learner. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> much to see right now but when so do red these have wine in them right now um, like if they're open like that you don't have to open it but i'm just saying if it's cracked like that is there still wine in there not necessarily or, not necessarily okay yeah. so what, one thing i asked her was if these uh stainless steel tanks were different than those big ones back there but they're the same it's just the stuff on the outside is different because i didn't know yeah just insulation insulation is different and those aren't jacketed, so there's nothing to control the temperature. If we want to chill or warm the wine, we have to pump it out oh. through a chiller or a heater. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whereas these will chill you, down. You can control it. Just the chill. Yeah. The chill. Yeah. So is that a big problem in this kind of heat, or are they insulated pretty good? Um, they're insulated pretty good, but yeah, it is. Um, with firm, there's a lot of heat built during fermentation, so we have to stay on it. Yeah. They check. They check the tanks multiple times every shift. Okay. Or, yeah, like so times. multiple times a day they're getting checked for temperature. Yep. Cool. So like all these pipes above our head, does the wine move through all those? Yeah. All these hoses move the wine between tanks? Yep. Wow. Seems like you have to be very organized. <laughs> no, okay. So you've been in the wine business for 15 years, or you've been a winemaker for 15 years. You've been in the wine industry for 20 years. Um, she yeah. started when she was five. I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of interesting that I am now having a vineyard and she was already in the wine industry, yep. kind of all brought it together. And then a question I get asked so much is if I'm gonna make wine, which I know it's like never say never, but like kind of, 
I know I probably said this to you, like I don't really have any interest in making wine, but if yeah. you ever want to make wine with yeah. my grapes, could have a family label. I know we totally could. Yeah. It would be a lot of fun. Yeah. So if, if you guys want wine from me, it will actually be from her. Yes, I'll make it. <laughs> we just have to invest in a lot of equipment. Yeah. But, but what about, like, it seems like a lot of people do it, like, in their garage. Yes, um, but you make Sauvignon Blanc. It's a little bit harder because okay. it, um, you have to have such a good, um, so much temperature control. Oh, okay. Red wines ferment at a higher temperature, um, so it's not, it's a little bit easier to make red wine. So maybe if you have plans oh. at Pinot Noir out in the Delta, we could start that and do that in the garage or in the barn. I don't like red wine. Oh. <laughs> so we'll stick with Sauvignon Blanc. But I also need to learn that it doesn't really matter what I like. <laughs> it's what other people like. Yeah. Well, someday. I mean, it's doable. I'm trying it's to, doable. I'm trying to get better about drinking wine. I actually just uh, partnered up with this company that mails wine. Oh, and they've been sending me yeah. white wine. And I was like, send me some red so I can like force myself to try. I think you mentioned that. Try. I think I saw something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so how big are those tanks? 655,000 gallons. 655,000 gallons, the biggest ones. How many do you have of those? Six. Six. Yeah. So. And so once it's in that tank there, is it ready to be in a bottle from there? Or is there more? There's more. Okay. I just didn't know if like once it was in those big tanks, it's like ready to start bottling. No, so that's like kind of a preliminary blending. Okay. And then when we decide exactly what our blend is going to be made up of, what varieties, um, what sugar level we want it to be, what, or all that stuff, then we'll move it out into a smaller tank where we can get more accurate measurements. But then, um, yeah, so we'll go through a stabilizing process um, to make sure it's heat and cold stable, and then we will filter it. Wine gonna come flying out? No, you just can't break the plane. So if you wanna look in there. Sure. Okay, so this is one of the tanks. A real, how much wine does this one hold, do you think? Um, about Oh, it says right there, capacity. Okay, so there is oak stakes in there. Staves. Staves. Yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. Um, okay, and what are, what are those used for? So those are just gonna impart some flavors into the Chardonnay. So basically, um, it's to mimic fermentation in a barrel, and it will impart some of the oak flavors. There you go. The nice. This thing is huge. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is the original. Yeah, this is the original um, fresh pad. How <laughs> many? How many? How many grapes go into a bottle of wine? How many grapes go into a bottle of wine? Um, about three or four bunches, depending. Three depending or on four the... bunches. So when I was testing my sugar, I wasted a whole bottle of wine. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. That's depending sad. On... Mm -hmm. So what you do instead of picking the whole bunch, you um. Just a few grapes. Yeah. I'm full learning. Of grapes. See, yeah. I'm learning because yeah. I've been told now just take a few grapes from the bunches. Yep. I was taking a whole bunch out. And then you need to be cons like you can pick from random places, but however you sample them be consistent the next time so that you know, oh so if it increases yeah. okay so when you test sugar you want to somewhat go to those same spots um is same, that what you mean same spots or like pick from the left the, you know nor, is your vineyard north south like i have north a north side. field and a south field so make sure you pick on both sides of the vine okay you know and pick berries that are exposed and berries that aren't exposed and then just kind of use that same practice every time you do it so that if there's um, an increase, you'll Yeah, see, it. I have not been doing it right. That's why I feel like my refractometer needs to be oh, yeah. um, okay. um, checked. And I just haven't been collecting the right samples, you know? So you're Which is just a learning, learning for me. I did red wines for the first five, six years, and I've been doing white wines for okay. the past. Do you have any of your red wines? Because they yes. last a very long yes, time, right? I do, yes. And white wine doesn't last as long? Uh, no, it's not. It just, I, I mean, some can, but typically it's an earlier drink. Yeah. And is it like, is that the grape is that way? Or is it how you guys ferment it? Or like, why does red both. wine, like red wine, it seems like you could have a hundred years old, the bottle. And yeah. white wine, it's like a couple years, drink it. Um, why it's is just, that? A, it's a sturdier, it's a sturdier wine. And um, 
a lot of the red wine, the reason why it tastes better as it ages is it's um, the tannins start to soften. Okay. So um, as those tannins age, they'll soften and it'll be a more pleasant drinking experience for you. But um, there is a point where it goes yeah, south. Yeah, it can go south, yeah. right. So. And then that's also like the cork and all that kind of stuff Absolutely. too, right? You have Storage. to have a really... Yeah, storage, yeah. right? You got that's why people. I've got my one little wine rack in our basement because yeah. it stays cold all the time. Yeah. Like it is really, yeah. it's the only spot that stays cold. Okay, so one question I get asked a ton because in the last couple videos I've been checking my sugar yes. and telling people I'm not quite there yet. So a lot of people ask me why the winery doesn't just add sugar. So it is illegal to add sugar here. In illegal. Yeah. to add sugar in California in there California. are other places even other states where it is legal okay it's legal in New Zealand it's legal in Europe but um, here in California we cannot just add sugar we can however add um, grape concentrate but um, it's oh. just not like juice yeah oh mm -hmm. okay yep grape, grape concentrate mm -hmm. okay so um, but it's just not always the preferred method yeah you, know, you want your grapes to have their true like profile right right yeah. So is there like a reason California doesn't add sugar? Because we're so warm. We, we have the climate where we don't need to. We don't need we to. We don't need to. But we are allowed to add acid. And there are other places that cannot add acid, but they can oh. add sugar. So it's kind of a little bit to um, maybe level the field a little, level the playing field a little bit. Okay. So that, I, think, I guess the rules kind of just keep you in balance. Yeah. Yeah. Which you, ha you have to have the whole market in balance anyways. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's the way the world works. Yeah. There's one, this is like totally random, <laughs> but there's one guy um, that has a vineyard next to us. I've actually been wanting to go record it. He's got a sound that sounds oh. like a hawk attacking a bird. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> it's terrible. That is really funny. We... And it's like, is that what I need to yeah. stop the birds from eating? That is really Can funny. Can you imagine living next to that? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's we... like an awful sound. We were actually in Napa not too long ago and we were at visiting a winery that had that bird screeching sound. Yes. And we were like, what is going, like this bird is really upset. <laughs> it's just and, a sound box. Yeah, yep. And the guy told us it was exactly to scare the birds away. Yeah, okay. So I think we, yeah. Covered all the bases. Yeah, we don't want to bore anybody. No, they're going <laughs> to love it. Okay, good, I hope they so. They are, because they asked me about like what happens after harvest and it's like I don't even really know yeah like the truck drives away and I'm like I'll wait for my check yeah you know yep. so no this is great and this is one one actually thing I was thinking is uh they were saying how sometimes you know they'll get a load and then after they dump a few loads they'll be like oh no we want to wait like who do you guys ever do that uh, like how yeah. is that decided um you if, know like that truck that was dumping like yeah. you know if you could are people there always tasting and being like, no, no, this vineyard needs to wait? Well, we'll taste it. I mean, for us, we will taste it typically the next day after it's all been crushed and it's all consolidated in the tank. Okay. And then if, yeah, if the bricks is too low, then we'll, we'll hold make them off. stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. they talked about that too a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay, well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. This was so fun. Yeah, good. And you'll come out to the vineyard. And, yep. Absolutely. And then when we can, when COVID is over, we might attempt this again. Yes. Yeah. And not have to wear so masks. I can show you more. Mm -hmm. And I can see a little bit more behind the scenes because things are like really strict right now. Yeah. And so yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>